Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Untold Royal Secrets. It's your favorite neighborhood critic back with some piping hot tea about everyone's least favorite ex-royals. Grab your popcorn, because this is going to be a wild ride. So now, I was scrolling through my feeds, minding my own business, when BAM! This juicy nugget drops about Meghan and Harry's latest escapade. And let me tell you, it's got me cackling like a hyena at a comedy club. Now, apparently, our favorite attention-seeking duo thought they'd make a splash by buying some fancy property in Portugal. You know, because apparently California wasn't giving them enough spotlight. But oh boy, did this backfire spectacularly. Now, we all know I try to keep things fair and balanced around here. But folks, sometimes the universe hands you a story so deliciously ironic, you just can't help but dive in head first. And this, my friends, is one of those times. So, let's break this down, shall we? Meghan and Harry, in their infinite wisdom, decided to drop a cool 4 million euros, that's about 4.3 million freedom dollars, for us Americans on some swanky property in Portugal. Now, I don't know about you, but that seems like a lot of dough for two people who are supposedly so concerned about their privacy and security. But hey, what do I know? I'm just a humble YouTuber, not a self-proclaimed global humanitarian power couple. But here's where it gets good. These two roll into town, probably expecting the red carpet treatment. You know, adoring crowds, paparazzi, the whole nine yards. After all, they're Meghan and Harry. They're practically royalty. Oh, wait. Instead, what do they get? A collective shrug from the locals. That's right, folks. The good people of Portugal took one look at our dynamic duo and basically said, meh. One local estate agent, and let me tell you, I love this guy already, dropped this absolute gem. We have much richer and much more famous people buying here for sure. I think they will have zero impact, to be honest. Can you imagine? These two, who've spent the last few years desperately trying to convince the world of their importance, just got told they're small potatoes. I mean, when you're being compared unfavorably to Jeff Bezos in terms of star power, you know you've hit rock bottom. But wait, it gets better. The owner of a local seafood restaurant, and this is my personal favorite part, actually laughed at the mention of British royalty moving in. Laughed, he said, and I quote, the rich from the resorts don't eat with the poor. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds an awful lot like a challenge to me. Hey, Megan, Harry, why don't you prove him wrong? Oh, wait, that's right. You're too busy playing victim and complaining about how hard your lives are to actually engage with regular folks. My bad. But let's take a step back for a second and really savor the irony here. These two left the royal family because they supposedly wanted more privacy, right? They couldn't handle the constant scrutiny, the pressure of royal life. They wanted to be normal people. So what do they do? They buy a multi-million euro property in an exclusive gated community. Because nothing says we're just like you, quite like living in a luxury resort that most people couldn't even dream of affording. And the best part? The locals couldn't care less. One businessman said that A-listers are drawn to the area because they can walk around unbothered. Well, good news, Meghan and Harry. Looks like you've finally found the privacy you've been crying about for years. Congratulations. But here's the kicker. I bet they hate it. Think about it. These two have spent the last few years doing everything in their power to stay in the spotlight. The Oprah interview, the Netflix series, Harry's tell-all book. They've milked their royal rebel shtick for all it's worth. And now... They're in a place where people genuinely don't care, where they can walk around unbothered, where they're just another rich couple in a sea of even richer, more famous people. It's like that old saying, be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. Well, Meghan and Harry wished for privacy and now they've got it in spades. 
and I bet it's driving them absolutely bonkers. But let's talk about the real victims in all this. The poor, unsuspecting people of Portugal. I mean, can you imagine? One day you're going about your business, enjoying your beautiful country, and the next day, these two drama magnets show up on your doorstep. I can just picture Megan now, strutting around the local village square, expecting people to bow and curtsy. Sorry, honey, but that's not how it works here. These folks have seen actual A-listers. They're not going to be impressed by a Z-list actress who married into royalty and then couldn't hack it. And Harry? Oh, Harry, I almost feel sorry for the guy. Almost. Remember when he used to be the fun prince? The cheeky one who we all loved? Now he's just... sad. Following Megan around like a lost puppy, probably wondering where it all went wrong. But you know who I really feel sorry for? The other residents of this fancy resort. Imagine paying millions for a quiet, exclusive getaway, only to find out that the drama king and queen of Montecito are your new neighbors. Talk about a property value plummet. And let's not forget about the staff at this place. You know Megan's going to be demanding they call her Duchess at every turn. Sorry, Megs, but that title doesn't mean much when you're rubbing elbows with people who could buy and sell you a hundred times over. Now I know some of you might be thinking, aren't you being a bit harsh? Maybe they really do just want some peace and quiet. And to that I say, have you been paying attention for the last few years? These two don't want peace and quiet. They want attention. They crave it. It's like oxygen to them. Why else would they keep popping up in the media, always with some new grievance or dramatic revelation? No, this move to Portugal isn't about finding privacy. It's about finding a new audience. They've worn out their welcome in the UK. They've become old news in the US. So now they're trying to conquer Europe. Good luck with that, guys. Based on this reception, I'd say it's not going too well. But you know what the saddest part of all this is? They could have had it all. They were beloved members of the royal family. They had a platform to do real good in the world. They had the adoration of millions, and they threw it all away. For what? A Netflix deal? A podcast that nobody listens to? A book full of petty grievances and TMI moments? Meanwhile, look at William and Kate. They're out there every day, doing their royal duties with grace and dignity. They're raising their children to understand the responsibility that comes with privilege. They're carrying on the legacy of the Queen with honor. And Meghan and Harry? They're buying overpriced property in Portugal and getting laughed at by the locals. How the mighty have fallen. So what's next for our favorite ex-royals? Well, if I were a betting person, and let's face it, I am, I'd say we're in for more of the same. More playing the victim, more vague accusations against the royal family, more desperate attempts to stay relevant. But here's the thing, it's not going to work anymore. The world is moving on. The novelty of the rebellious royal has worn off. And with each passing day, with each new attention-seeking stunt, Meghan and Harry are just digging themselves deeper into irrelevance. My prediction? Within a few years, there'll be nothing but a footnote in royal history. A cautionary tale about what happens when you mistake fame for importance, when you prioritize attention over duty, when you burn bridges instead of building them. And William and Kate? Well, they'll still be there, doing what they've always done, supporting each other, raising their children, representing the monarchy with grace and dignity. And one day, they'll be king and queen, beloved by the nation and respected around the world. So there you have it, folks. The latest tea in the ongoing saga of Meghan and Harry vs. the world. They came, they saw, they got laughed at by Portuguese locals. And honestly, I couldn't be more here for it. It's about time someone punctured their overinflated egos. What do you think? Are you as amused by this whole situation as I am? Or do you think Meghan and Harry might actually find what they're looking for 
in Portugal? Drop your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more royal tea. Until next time, this is your friendly neighborhood royal watcher signing off. Stay classy and remember, sometimes the best thing you can do is sit back and let karma do its work.